Okay, so let's turn back to our main text, Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Okay, so Paul's telling the people that, hey, you Galatians are called to liberty. This is all liberty right here. Freedom. Remember, what is this? Do you remember? What is this? This is not liberty. This is what? Bondage, right? Paul said that quite many times, so we're not going to go through that over and over again. Return to our main text. Brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Paul's saying don't use your liberty here where you're free from the bondage of the law to serve your flesh, to please your flesh. Uh, let's keep reading right here. It says, but by love... So, uh, but by love serve one another. So Paul's saying right here, don't use this liberty as an opportunity. Yeah, we're free from the law, but that doesn't mean that you're free enough to do whatever you want in your flesh. You got to think about others. Think about others. When you think about others, that's where love shows. Love is manifested. You, you want, this will get some of you Arrogant Bible believers under conviction. You better pay attention to this. Do you know why Bible believers, they always get nitpicky, okay? Especially at PBI. I've been at PBI. And then some of you who attended PBI may have seen this. You ever seen one of these nitpicky people, you know? These nitpicky, nitpicky people on a certain doctrine in an area. And they cause a, a big ruckus about it. And they want to start their own little group. They hand out sheets, you know, in secret. Especially during a revival meeting, a blowout meeting, right? They'll pass out these sheets, you know? And they'll do this so that they can get their own little crowd. And that's the thing that uh, ticks me off more than anything is that so a lot of them don't think about others here. Here's another thing. We get a newcomer inside our church, all right? Yeah, you may be in the right, but here's something. There are times you have to compromise. There are times you have to think and lower yourself to serve others others just because you're free the Bible made you free from the law and bondage in some things you can't use your liberty to please yourself many times when you give this arrogant spirit of what you know on doctrine and you uh, chase away newcomers because of your over overt spiritual zeal you got to realize this. That is pride. There it is. Arrogance. That is a nitpicky attitude. And I don't like that either. And you got to understand this is that you got to think about others here. When you think about others, you change the tone of your voice. You change how you talk with certain people. And then you, the newcomer will feel more welcome to stay in this church. And they'll stick around a little longer. You got to think about that. I mean, is that some of these idiotic street preachers who are not even fundamental Baptists, a lot of them teach lordship salvation, they try to justify themselves with scripture because the scripture gave us liberty, but then by that they drop their thinking of others because they don't have love for others. They don't. They don't have love for others. If they truly had a love for others, they they'd be more careful with how they talk to people. And if you think I'm wrong, then let me challenge you this. Can you say this to your wife to your husband then, huh? You'll change your tone, huh, when you talk to your husband and wife? So, oh, I'm a bold street preacher. I'm a bold Bible believer. Okay, then when it comes to your wife, oh, oh, honey, blah, 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 like that. You know what, you sissy. You, you nincompoop, you sissy, you. See, you're not bold for Jesus Christ. You wear a skirt when you're around your wife, man. That's what happens to you. And you act all bold and and courageous when you're preaching out in public, when you're talking to people at the church. No, you're just a coward. That's what you are. Especially if you're online and you bully other Bible-believing preachers and you got this big internet platform and you're, you're like criticizing this preacher, that preacher, this preacher, that preacher. Why? Because they're a smaller channel than you. And then you bully them and you act all tough. And then when I get on your case and I call you out, then you act like all cowardice and you go, oh, oh let's, let's be quiet. Shh, 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 shh. 
You get all scared of me. See, this is why I get on those guys, see? I get on those guys because I hate it when you try to hurt other people. That's what takes your pastor off. What takes your pastor off is when you stomp on other people. When you got to realize those others are the people who Jesus died for when you didn't even die for them because you're too proud, you're too arrogant, you're too full of yourself. All right, let's read it right. Let's go back over here. Verse 14, for all the law is fulfilled in one word. So you can fulfill everything of God's law in one word. What is it? Even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's very true. Now, you heard me indicate this several times, so I'll stress it more over here. Remember, we are not bound to the Old Testament law, right? But Paul's saying that we will never, even though we're free from it, we're still going to follow the law. Why is that? Because there's a different law. What was that different law that we talked about in our last class? It's the law of the Spirit. Remember, Paul called this the law of the flesh. What we're here right here is the law of the Spirit. If you have the right spirit, see that? If you have a right spirit within you, isn't this going to match perfectly with this? You have a right spirit with... What happens is, is when you keep considering about others, 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 you're going to get a right spirit when you preach, when you teach, when you talk to others. And yes, even when you kick and criticize, you're going to get a right spirit about it. The right spirit is when you think about others. Because read that verse again. All the law, see right here, this whole thing fulfilled in one word. Loving others. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Look at Romans 13. Romans 13. You don't, you know what the best advice for you is if you want to make sure you live biblically right? It's when you have experience with people in church, experience in talking to other people when you're witnessing. That is golden advice more than all the videos that I teach combined to you. That's why online is very dangerous because if you're in your own little world, you're going to develop so much knowledge and then you're going to, and you will violate the law no matter how many rules of the law you know in your head. You, the rules of the law is going to come out naturally to you when you live like this. When you live like this, how do I witness better to the other person? What can I do to help out, Pastor? What can I do to help, to help the church better? You're going to grow much more faster than any other person. And all these rules are going to naturally come after that. That's what's going to happen. That's why I stress so much to onlineers, please attend a Bible-believing church. Don't just stick into YouTube, all right? I'm not one of those people. You got to attend a Bible-believing church, and I thank God how so many of you requested and asked me for a Bible-believing church. And if I didn't get back to you, I'm sorry, because I got two guys on it, and I got myself on it, and we just got a flood of emails. So just please keep harassing me about that. Give me a church, give me a church, and then we'll try to find you a church, okay? I'd appreciate that, because that's how you're going to grow faster. You know what the greatest evidence is? The people who not just watch me online, the people who are watching me right now in this room. Didn't you all grow much faster when you're around what? Didn't you? See, it doesn't matter how many videos you watch from me. It's actually when you're in person around other people. Okay, let's uh, go back to our main text. Oh, by the way, here, uh, let me argue this. That way it can be greater evidence. How many of you grew much more attending our church rather than watching our church online. Can you raise your hand, please? Yeah, see that? So the rest of you are just shy, but it's okay. <laughs> but here's the idea is that, so notice right here is that you grow much more in our church when you attended here more than watching online, right? So that's the idea right here. That is evidence. It is evidence. Because I got people in this church who are onliners just like you. And trust me, all the stuff that you watch, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have one of these members who watch that too. All right? They watch all kinds of stuff out there. But they found more growth attending rather than just watching. All right, let's, let's go back to our main text. Uh, I said Romans 13, correct? So let's go to Romans 13. Look at verse 8. 
owe no man anything. But to what? Love one another. When you do that, what happens? For he that loveth another hath what? Fulfilled the law. See, you complete everything in the law. For this, and he names the commandments here. See? The commandments are mentioned. So we're not hyper-dispensationalists where we completely drop the Old Testament law. Remember, what's our rule again? Our rule is, yes, the Old Testament law is abolished. It's replaced by the law of the Spirit. But this law of the Spirit is going to find anything spiritual within this Old Testament law that will be good for your spiritual life. That's the idea. So look at this, verse 9, Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, see Paul's saying right here, all those commandments in the Old Testament, I don't even have to name it. It's just briefly in this, what? Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. See that? See, when you love others, you're not going to commit adultery with that other person's wife. You're not going to kill that person. You're not going to steal from that person. Okay, let's return to our main text. By the way, didn't you notice that the Sabbath is not mentioned here? In the, ten, in the commandments that are mentioned here? If the Sabbath is that important to you in the Ten Commandments, it's very telling Paul did not mention that in Romans 13, 9. Do you know why? What's the law? Loving one another. And by enforcing people to attend services on Saturday, that's not in a way where you're considerate about another person, loving to another person. You ponder and pray about that for a while. That's why, doesn't it make sense, Jesus Christ, where he supposedly broke the Sabbath? What was his reasoning? His reasoning was loving that person who was sick. See that? The love will, will make all the commandments. It will fulfill all the law for you. You don't need the exact rule and regulation. That was the problem with the Pharisees and Sadducees, see? They had so much rule and regulation that Jesus said they forgot the weightier matters of the law. And that one of them was love. One of them was mercy. It was others. Back at Galatians chapter 5, and I got to finish it right here. So we will read verse <coughs> 15. But if ye bite and devour one another... So if we have Christians, you know, like dogs that bite against each other, that means they're fighting, right? So that's what he means in this phrase right here. If we bite and devour one another, see, we try to eat each other up. Take heed, Paul saying, be careful that ye be not consumed one another. Be careful that you don't consume each other. And that is an important lesson that I want you, church, to understand. That's why you're going to notice your pastor is always very, very careful when it comes to unity in the church. And when it comes to disagreement, fights, and splits in between, you notice how I'm very, very careful of that. You know why? Because we have to stress on this more than any other thing in the world. That should be a, the last thing we can ever do is biting and devouring each other. And guess what? What happens? You consume each other up. That's what happens. And it hurts another person completely. They don't come back to church anymore. They don't grow in Jesus Christ anymore. And you yourself too get affected and you get naturally consumed as well. That's the danger of being a Bible believer. What? Bible believer? Yes, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you, Bible believers. We go, we got so much. See, all the stuff we know from the Bible. But because of that, we forget what's the most important. When we concentrate on this, all of this will naturally follow. That's what you got to understand. And because we stress so much on this, that's why there's always a split, a split, a split. Someone grabbing members from some Bible-believing pastor's church, them starting their own movement. YouTube is a joke. of, And I'm talking about real, saved, genuine Bible believers who are devouring each other. It is ludicrous. It is stupid. I don't want to be a part of that. Unless I have to, because it's affecting the body of Christ as a whole, then I'll have to do it. I'll call it out. But my goodness, avoid this as much as possible. You want, to be, you want this to be the last resort right here. Because then there is no Bible-believing movement that can powerfully arm themselves together to fight against the real enemy out there. We're too busy shooting at each other when we should be shooting at the real enemy out there. 